someone that has diligently studied for the last year. I find him to be a very good student. And he seems like he's uh, leading the class right now in terms of the students that we have in the class. Uh, if someone wonders why I have someone who's a deacon preach, in the process of working toward being a minister. And right now, he is my top student. Uh, he can deliver the word, otherwise, I wouldn't have him up there. Amen. The sermon will be about Abraham. And I'm going to. Uh, ask everybody to give them a hand. Amen. 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 All glory to Amen. you, Father. Amen. Let us pray. Father, Abba, we come to your presence in the name of your Son, Jesus of Nazareth. I ask you, Father, to have your Holy Spirit to translate and translate and to communicate your people, my brothers and sisters, the message that you have prepared on this day for them. Let them not look at the messenger, but to look at the message that you have prepared for them. In the name of Jesus, amen. Good morning, everyone. For those that are here for the first time, welcome to New Birth Ministries. Jesus is not just the final word of the church stuff. It's the final word on A to C stuff. Everything we need to know about God can be found in Jesus. He's the final word on all subjects matters. The Bible says that being eternal, Jesus Christ has no beginning and no end. But it also says that Jesus is the beginning and the end. We will find out what that means in today's lessons. In today's topics, great men of the Bible. Who was Abraham? Abraham was the patriarch of the Hebrew people. Abraham is traditionally called Father Abraham because the Israelite people and the religion descend from him. God establishes his covenant and promise with Abraham. And God develops an ongoing relationship with the Israelites through Abraham descendants. Abraham practices the monastic worship of God and his resilient faith in God, despite many challenges, set the pattern for the Israeli religion's view of righteousness. According to the biblical account, Abraham means the father, or God is exalted, who is later named Abraham, the father of many nations. A native of you are in Macedonia, is called by God, Yahweh, to leave his own country and people and journey to an undecided land where he will become the founder of the new nation. What were the three promises God made to Abraham? The covenant between Abraham and God consisted in three separate parts. The promise land, the promise of the descendants, and the promise of blessings and redemptions. When you went to preschool or elementary school, the first thing that the teachers want to instruct you or instruct you on was the alphabet. They wanted you to learn your A, B, C, D, A, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, N, O, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, C. They wanted you to know A to C because the rest of your lives will be banking on it. What the ABCs are to us in the English language, Alpha and Omega is in the Greek language. 
Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Omega is the last letter of the alphabet. While Jesus Christ lived in the great speaking world, and so they will not be talking A to C. They will be talking Alpha to Omega, because that will be the lettering of the world in which they live, spoke, wrote, and read. If A to C is the completeness of communication, understanding, and knowledge for all of your lives, from the time you get up in the morning to the time you go to bed at night, you are banking on the fact that those letters are not changing on you. When Jesus says, I am the Alpha and Omega, he is declaring that he himself is the complete knowledge based for all life. And Jesus says, I am not just talking on alphabet. I'm talking about me. Because he says, if you want to know one of my names, I am Alpha and Omega. And so, the name Alpha and Omega is the name that identifies the comprehensive knowledge base, the comprehensive wisdom base, the comprehensive revelation base of all ministry God resident in the person of Jesus Christ. In fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 27, 28 says, all life, all of life resolve around Jesus Christ. Every part of uh, your life is to be connected, plug into, sink into, not God the Father, but to Jesus Christ. Because he is the revelation of God from heaven to earth. His job is to bring in it from there to here so we get it. And that is why what Jesus says about a subject and he is the basis of the full revelation of God in the final word of the subject. Hebrews 12, 1 to 3 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders or hinders at the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance to raise mark out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfected of faith. For the joy set before him, be endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such a position from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. I know that this day, I am talking to some people here who are tired. It's called being weary and losing heart. And so, if you are tired, this passage is for you. Because he wants you to keep going. He says, don't quit. It's, it's rough right now. I understand that. But there is a race that I want you to finish. Referring to the Christian race of living your life for the glory of God and the good of others. There is a race I want you to finish because there is somebody who starts stuff and finish stuff. That is Alpha and Omega. He says, the author, that is the originator. And the uh, finisher, that is the completer of your faith. So we must make an assumption as, as I make these critical points. And the assumption is that you are a Christian. If you have trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior for your eternal life and the forgiveness of your sins, then that means that you have entered the faith but it is possible to enter the faith by not being running the race. 
So he wants to talk to people in the faith, but who many not been running the race or running the race well. He says, for those folks, I want you to change your focus. A focus, the Greek word here for focus means to stare at or to, or to look with a penetrating eye. He says, I want you to focus on Jesus. He says in verse number, number two, fixing our eyes, that's focus. We already know his name is Alpha and Finisher, or Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. First and last, he says, I need you to fixate on him. Now, if you are fixating on something, then that means that you have to stop being fixating on something else That means something else. Okay, you can. You can be fixating on multiple things at the same time. You can look in multiple directions at the same time, but you cannot fixate on some things or multiple things at the same time because that means you are zeroing, zeroing in on it. He says, I want you to fix your eyes on Jesus, which means... I want you to start fixating on you, okay? I want you to leave you for a minute. I want you to start fixating on your posse. I want you to start fixating on your friends. I want you to start fixating on what everybody else thinks, and I want you to fixate on Jesus Christ. A great illustration, this is in Matthew 14, verses 28 to 31, because there is a storm, and Jesus is walking on the water. Okay, wait a minute. Jesus sent his disciple out into a storm, and he comes to them walking on the problem, because the problem is the storm. That is the problem. Jesus sent them into a storm. And he's coming to them on the same storm that he sent them on without getting rid of the storm. So what I'm trying to say, just in that much, is that your mess, your billow. Billow means a large mess of something, typically a cloud or smoke. The wind blowing on you all over the place might be just the right space to see Jesus walking on the very thing that got you terrified. So he began walking to them on the storm. Peter, my boy Peter. Peter says, Lord, be me to come if you give me an okay. Because I am looking at you and I'm seeing what you're doing. If you tell me, okay, I'm going to take the risk and I'm going to stay out of the boat. You see, if you are fixated on the circumstances, then you are not going to take the risk to stay out of the boat. But if you fixate on Jesus and he bid you to come, he's telling you to take a face risk in a difficult situation. So Peter stepped out of the boat, and Peter is walking on the problem. Mind you, we're still on the storm. The circumstances hasn't changed, but he is now walking on it, and now being consumed by it. The Bible says in Matthew 14, 28, 31, that while he was walking on the storm, he took his eyes off from Jesus. And when he took his eyes off from Jesus, he says, he began to sink. 
he began to go down. In another word, the circumstances took over. The circumstances hadn't changed. His eyesight changed. He stopped looking at Jesus, and the circumstances took over. The same circumstances a minute ago he was walking on, he started to sink while, while he was going under. He remembered Jesus. And it says he looked back up to Jesus and said, Lord, save me. Then it says Jesus then reached down and pulled him up. I don't want you to miss this. Jesus let him sink. Jesus didn't step. Jesus didn't stop him from uh, sinking. Sometimes we are going under, and we want to know where is God. God didn't move. Jesus hasn't moved where. Jesus hasn't moved. Now my question is, where are your eyes? That's the question. What are your flaws? What are your, your flaws on? What are you looking at? When he remembered to refocus on Jesus, Jesus then reached down and saved them. And watch this. And they walked together on the storm. They were still on the storm, but they were walking together in the storm. And there are other people walking alongside this as we go through the tough time in life. I love Philippians 1.6, which says, He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. That is good news. Jesus is Omega. And Jesus is an Omega business. If you come to him in the Alpha start, even if you getting your letters mixed up along the way, the beautiful thing about an alphabet is that you can rearrange the letters and create new sentences and new words. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. And the good news that if you will flow on him, he can still take you to the finish line. Now watch this. This is good stuff that I'm about to tell you. He says, since we are surrounded by, by soul, a great kind of witnesses, a witness is a testimony. A witness is somebody who testifies. When boxers, whenever they have a boxing heavyweight championship, and the two fighters are ready to square off, particularly if it's a heavyweight bout, you know, you know what they do? They bring, they bring in the previous champions. Folks who already been in the ring and come out in victory. And they go and shake the hands of both parties of who are getting ready to fight. And the reason they bringing them, they bringing them into the ring is to bring, bring in somebody who has been there before, who been to the bombs and bruises and still come out a winner, even though they got beat up in the process and they are letting both of these fighters know, even though you are in the battle, it's a winnable war. Well, God knows that we have a struggle in focusing in him. And so, he brought some witnesses, some folks 
that testify. He called for testimony service. That testimony service is, to the whole, is in the whole chapter of the Hebrew chapter 11. See, when he says on chapter 12, verse 1, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, the witness he is talking about are all lined up in chapter 11. Now, when you read these heroes of the faith in chapter 11, you wonder how some of those, some of those guys made it in that chapter because they have some fools in that chapter. They have some follies with some of the issues in that chapter. Starting with Moses. Moses was a felon. Moses was a murderer. And he had to run from his life. But when his eyes were fixated back in the right direction to the burning bush, God still used them to let my people go. Even though he made a mess, God was able to redirect him and still accomplish his purpose. So you found him in Hebrew chapter 11. I don't know how Jacob got in Hebrew chapter 11. Jacob had 12 children by four different women. He has got a master or deceiver, a liar, a carnivore, and a jiva. But when he met God, and when he wrestled with him all night, God said, I'm still going to make a great nation of you and keep my promise to Abraham and Isaac. You got David in chapter 11. He is a murderer, an adulterer. But when he got straight with God, based on Psalm 51, and God arrived with God, the scriptures say, God still call him a man after my own heart. I sure don't know how Samson got into chapter 11. He's the Don Juan of the Old Testament. He's the player. But when he got straight, even in the latter part of his life, that cost him his life, God met him. God let him see him again and graduated him to the hall of faith. What I'm trying to say is, there are testimonies out there that no matter how messed up you are, how long you've been messed up, if you will fix your eyes on Jesus, if you look at the Olympics and you see a rower, and the rower are going to the opposite side, they are facing. I don't know if you notice that uh, uh, rowers in the Olympic. If you ever, uh, if you know anybody or any of you have seen the Olympics uh, and the rowers, uh, it's a race of boats, and they have a team of many men and rowing, and they row not looking where they're going, and so they don't know where they're going, so they don't see where they're going. And that's why they are facing, uh, they have a coach that is facing them uh, called uh, a Cox Wayne. Now, this Cox Wayne is looking where they are going. And the Cox Wayne says, look at me. Look at me and don't try to figure out where you are going because you can see where you are going. Just follow my dictates, follow my guidance, because I know where I need to go. Oh, we need to go, I should say. So you see, life is too uncertain. Things come to us from too many directions. We only know this much, but since Jesus is Alpha and Omega, 
he knows where we're going. And if we will focus on him, he will take he will take us where we need to be. In closing, it was 1992. It was Barcelona, Spain, and it was the Summit Olympics. It was the 400 meter race. And in the race was a British runner, the leading runner for that race. And his name was Derek Redmond. Derek Redmond, got into the starting blocks and he took off and he was ahead of the pack a hundred meters from the finish line he turned his hamstrings and it's cruciating painful thing and it took him to the ground he lay there crying and the excruciating pain at the injury and tears because he had lost the race he had he has been training for all those years. If you remember, those first person remember, he tried to get himself up. But he was all by himself, all alone. He was trying to get up as far as he can. But as he was too he was in so much pain and he couldn't continue. He just cried out. But that's when a gentleman from the top of the audience walked himself down, came down to the track. That man's name was Gene Redmond. That was Derek's daddy. Derek's daddy came from the top of the stands, made his way down. Derek said to his daddy, Daddy, I don't want to go out like this. I want to finish the race. That's when Gene Redmond held Derek. He held the man, put his arm over his shoulder, put his arm around his waist, and he said, Son, we are going to finish this race together. And he helped Terry Redman on to cross the finish line. I tell you this, brothers and sisters, you may you may be break I mean you may be broke down right now. Maybe turn up. You may have failed. You may have seen. You may have disregarded the truth of God, but the Bible says when Jesus died, he rose and he went to the third heaven. And he is in the right hand side of God. But when he sees one of his saints who are fixated on him, he will leave the stands. He will come down to the track. He will see where you are laying down. He will pick you up and he will drag you across the finish line. Keep your eyes on Jesus because he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the author and the finisher. He will get you across the finish line. God bless you. Hello. I hear you, Pastor. Amen. Uh, Thank you, Brother Felix. Amen. Brother Felix, thank you for a very interesting sermon. At this time, I would ask, since everyone is a member, Mother Thea, Deacon Estia, would you uh, see who needs prayer? And I'll have you pray for them. You and I can do it. Anybody for prayer? Yes, I want to cool. ask for prayer for my friend Rona, who's uh, sick again after going through COVID, and uh, her husband, who's also on 
uh, manual ventilator. I want to pray for them. Okay. Anyone else? Pastor, I have a few, okay? I'm just going to group them together okay. as um, a grieving family, a family that needs um, protection from harm, um, mental illness, sickness, and encouragement. Okay, why don't you pray uh, uh, I'm sorry. You want me to? Pray, pray for the people uh, individually and as a group. Oh, with Sister Sandy speaking. Okay, yes. Sister Sandy, you're under the sickness, right? Yes, my friend. I pray, I pray in the name of Jesus for Sandy's friend. Lord, you know better than we do what your plan is, but help us to understand and let your will be done. We're asking you to ease our minds and to heal that sister because God is asking, because the sister is asking for you, Lord Jesus, for your help and your understanding. Father God, I thank you for what you have done for us and we know that the outcome will be uh, amical one for all of us. Um, Lord Jesus, as far as the personal ones that, that I have, I'm just asking you to heal them and let them know that if they come to you, you're the one that will give them the comfort that they seek and, and that they're looking for. We're asking you to cure the sickness, the mothers that are grieving for their children. Lord, the people that have let toxic things come to them, we're asking you, Lord, to Step in and just fix it, Jesus. Fix everybody. Fix the sickness. Fix the COVID. We're asking you, Lord, to look out for those who, who want to repent. Show them that it's easier than they really truly think. All they have to do is give up their sin and ask for your forgiveness, Lord Jesus, and walk the way you want us to walk and do with the way you want us to do. Lord, I thank you for our pastor. Keep him well and honored. Thank you, Lord, for his... Uh, years. He's, have, he's celebrating uh, X number birthdays. That's a blessing in itself, Lord. Help him, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask him. His help me. We ask you to put a protection of cover over her, Lord. Keep her in courage. Give her courage and strength to do what she does every day. Not only does she just take care of her family, she takes care of her church family. She is the true church mother, and we thank you for her, Lord Jesus. For our pastor, Brother Felix, and his companion, we ask him to put a cover of protection while he's at work and while he's at play and while he encourages other people. Him and his companion, may they continue on their way. Sister Karen, you are a blessing and an inspiration. You are out of state and you still come in every Sunday. And for that, I want to thank you because you're a good example for the future that we have in this church. Doesn't matter where, this is where you know your blessing and your encouragement lies. Brother Devin, I thank you for your presence and we hope you continue to um, be with us and encourage us in our finances so that we can grow to be a million dollar church in the name of Jesus. All right, amen, everybody. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, okay, Ms. I'm Thea. just gonna add this. God, you said, Wherever two or three are gathered in your name, that blessings would come down. Lord, you say that those people that serve you, you would keep in the palm of your hand and that no harm would come to them. Lord, you say that if I go out and find some people that wanted to work for you, that not only would they inherit the kingdom of heaven, but if they tithe and put their finances and their families in your hands, you would make them prosper. Lord, I don't have to worry about you keeping your word. You've never fallen short of your word. We just ask you, Lord, to give each and every disciple for Christ the strength to step out of the boat just like Peter did, just like I did, Lord. You don't need no club to tell you to follow God. You don't need no bunch of people to tell you that you walk in the right way. Because, Lord, when we walk in your path, 
you bless us and people wonder, how did you, how did you get to that place from where you started? People will look at you and say, how come Corona didn't get you when it got so many? Although 10,000 may fall on your right hand and 10,000 may fall on your left hand, mm -hmm. you are in the hands of God. And as the speaker said today, if you happen to take your eye off him, you're going to sink. But if you remember, all you got to do is call out to Jesus like my deaconess did today. She called out on behalf of the congregation. She called out on the behalf of certain people. Lord, if she were not anointed, I would not have her do that. And I know you heard her prayer. I'm being number two because you said, wherever one or two are gathered in my name, I will be in the midst. Lord, I'm calling on you, Lord, to and I'm standing on your promises, the promises you made in the Bible and the promises you made to me to protect each and every person in this service from whatever it is that they say they got out there. To bless those people that they prayed for, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Heal them, Lord. Fix them, Lord. So that they can do like I did. Go to the report from the doctor and the doctor said, I can't find nothing. Somebody don't understand it, but it, you don't have to understand it. Just understand that Dr. Jesus got all of here. That even though they might be laying off people in the millions, Deacon Felix got a job. Even though they're laying people off in the millions, Deacon Estia is working. Her son is working. Her daughter is working because her hand is in God's hand. Lord, we thank you for all of the blessings that you've given us and all those that you're going to give us in the future. We don't need no club, and it ain't about how many you got. It's whether or not those 12 are in the boat. And our Lord, I'm thanking you that the people that are here today, I know they got out the boat. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to uh, do something that I uh, normally do when I have a guest speaker. I'm going to ask uh, Deacon Felix to give me closing prayer. I'm sorry, Pastor. I couldn't hear you. Normally, I do that when I have a guest speaker, but I'm going to ask you to give the closing prayer. Amen. Everybody, close your eyes. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father Abba. We thank you in the name of your son, Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity to become more like you, to act like you, to see in the spiritual and to act in the spiritual as you would. Father, we thank you for another day when we can see every creation every wonder of your creations in great details and enjoy and give you thanks. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for your glory, yes. for your grace. Thank you. We thank you, Father, for the day that you have put in our life, even though we don't know how deep the waters are. We don't know what's in front of us, but we have all trust in all our hearts is in you. We trust you with all our heart. And we thank you, Father, for everything that you have been manifesting in our life. We thank you for manifesting your glory in each individual sons and daughters of you in today's day. Thank you for predestining our existing in this generation to serve you for your glory. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to have this honor and privilege to be called your sons and daughters. It is great honors for us to serve you. 
at all costs, even with our lives. Thank you, Jesus, just for this opportunity and this day. We ask you, Father, to bless a pastor, yes, Jesus. each member of our church. Yes, Jesus. And the message that you have given us today, let the hearts digest the message. Yes, and as light as you have proclaimed us to be in the salt of this world, let us go and do your will. Yes, not a will Thank you. because we are being obedient to your will yes, and that is the only goal for us to do your will yes. let us be the light for those that are walking in darkness right now for those that are still limping or falling down on rocks in the fogginess let those be exposed to the light your light. Let those that are going to work right now or are coming back from work now and are going to their families, let those that don't know you, let this day be the day that they reconcile their relationship with you. Thank For you those seven. that have forgotten that pact that they made with you once in their lives, let this day be that day where they come to your life and they reconcile with you. Where they come back to you in repentance yes, to Jesus. be part once again of your army. Mm -hmm. To be part of this, of this purpose that you have for humanity. Yes, to all glory be to you, yes. Father Abba. All this we ask you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Brother Felix. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. God bless you, everyone. God bless you, Pastor. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. May the good Lord bless you with great health and everything good to come. For all his glory and purpose, especially the new church and everything you're trying to do for his kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name. Grace and peace. From, from, my, from the Father God and our Lord Jesus yes. Christ, yes. our King. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. I'm going to end amen. with I am to worship. It's never been more important to speak, and Optimum can help with 300 meg internet and Optimum's entertainment experience with live TV and streaming apps built right yeah. in. All for just $65 a month, only at Optimum. Click now. Yeah. I know.
Have a great week, everybody. Good night, Sister Sandy. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you all. God bless you. Have a good week. Amen. You too.